Ah, oh, wow. Hey guys, Dr. Mustache here at the Pet Lab. Now everybody knows someone who's allergic to cats or dogs, and you've probably heard of hypoallergenic animals that are supposed to be cool for people with allergies to be able to hold and pet and not worry about sneezing. But are there any pets that are truly allergy free? And what does it mean to be hypoallergenic? The Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines hypoallergenic as having little likelihood of causing an allergic reaction. Now that doesn't necessarily mean it won't cause a flare up, it just means that there's less of a chance that it will happen. But are there any dogs or cats that are actually allergen free? Well, to answer that, we need to talk about what it is that causes these allergies. An allergy is caused by an overly sensitive immune system. When an allergic person's body comes in contact with a substance that is actually harmless, its body nevertheless releases chemicals to fight what it perceives as an intruder. Now it's commonly thought that dogs and cats with long hair are more likely to cause allergies, but this isn't true. The real cause of allergies are the proteins that your pet produces. These proteins are primarily found in the animal's saliva and oil glands. When your pet licks itself, flakes of skin, called dander, come off and stick to its fur, your furniture and carpet, or just stay in the air. So even dogs like the Sholowitz Quintli and cats like the Sphinx can cause an allergic response. And pet allergies can be pretty serious stuff. For some people, symptoms can last for up to six months after being exposed to a furry feline or pooch. And the same goes for houses. If not properly cleaned, dander can linger on furniture and rugs for months after a pet has left the house. President Barack Obama and his family have a Portuguese water dog named Bo, and that's considered to be a hypoallergenic breed. Now, poodles, Yorkies, Labradoodles, and Schnauzers are all considered to be hypoallergenic dogs as well, along with the Russian Blue and Devon Rex breeds of cats. But what does it mean to be hypoallergenic when all of these animals still produce protein. The data is still coming in, but more and more research points to the idea that hypoallergenic pets are a myth. Now, in a recent study, scientists took a group of 173 homes. Now, over 60 breeds were represented across these homes, including 11 hypoallergenic ones. And when scientists took samples from the floors of the homes, they found that the level of allergens were the same in the homes with hypoallergenic pets as they were in the ones with standard shedding dogs. Every person will have a different response to the proteins in a certain breed saliva. Overall, people have less of a response to the aforementioned hypoallergenic breeds. But just because a poodle is considered to be hypoallergenic by most people, doesn't mean that its proteins won't affect certain people who are otherwise happy playing with and petting a German Shepherd, for example. So a Portuguese water dog may be fine for the Obama family, but we can't say for certain that it'll be fine for the O'Connor family. Some people worry that getting a pet when they have a young child in the house may cause the child to develop allergies and get sick when they don't have a fully developed immune system. However, the reverse is actually true. According to research at the Henry Ford Hospital, children who are exposed early to allergens have a decreased likelihood of developing allergies. Not only did it reduce the likelihood of an allergic response, but kids who were introduced to these allergens before their first birthday developed a greater tolerance than kids who were introduced to it after their first year of life. And there you have it. Pets can be hypoallergenic, but it has more to do with the person than it does with the breed. Well, that's it for Pet Lab. I'm Dr. Mustache, and remember, if you have any questions or comments about your pet, leave them in the comments section below, and maybe we'll address them on an episode of Pet Lab. And speaking of that, I want to give a shout out to some of my mustache fans. Avindiap279, thank you. I think my mustache is pretty wondrous too. And Madam Van Kook, thank you. Funny and informative is what we're going for. Remember, if you like what you see here, be sure to click the subscribe button below to get more episodes of Pet Lab.